Hi there, this is the suggested solution of Cal 211, Calculus 2, and it is a midterm exam. So let us see the question paper. It has short questions and it has long questions. The short questions are filled uh, in the blanks and we have the long questions as well. Before we get to the solution of this question paper, I encourage you to subscribe if you haven't and you may like it if you find it useful. You may share it as well. So this is the solution of this question paper. Primarily the equation of the Young's theorem, it is mentioned here. So this is the equation of the Young's theorem. The other blank is to be filled with the derivative based formula of growth rate of function uh, and that is the natural logarithmic derivative of a given function that is function over derivative over the function. The optimization which is more realistic type of optimization is the constraint optimization. And when we refer to the matrix approach, it is the Hessian determinant that we use in our optimization. And then uh, the mathematical point of view of the optimal timing is that it is actually an optimum value or optimized value, which is actually the objective of our optimization process. So this was the solution of the objective part. Then we come to the long questions. And the first one is about the demand function of beef, which is given. It is an elaborated demand function. And and in this elaborated demand function, we also have the price of the alternative that is mutton and we also have the income. So these are the various values PM, PB and Y, the income, price of beef and price of mutton, they are given. Using these values, we can find the value of quantity demanded of beef, which is equal to this once we substitute all of these values. And then we take the derivative because we are interested in the income elasticity of demand. So we will need the derivative of the demand function with respect to income and we will also need the value of QB and Y. So here you can see the derivative is found and there we are. The derivative is here. And once we have this, we can divide it with the average function with respect to income, that is the demand function. So this is the formula of elasticity uh, with respect to income. And these are the various values that we have substituted here. Substituting and simplifying, we get this answer. And here we can see it is less than one and greater than zero so this is not a possibility so is neither is this so the, the possibility is here which is showing that eta is less than one so we can say that we are dealing with some kind of uh, necessity or basic needs and then we have the uh, other part and it is about the total differential of a utility function which is given here so this is the solution um, we have to take the total differential this is the formula of a total differential uh, once we have the two independent variables here you can see the partial derivative of the, with respect to the first variable and partial derivative with respect to the second variable this is the uh, differential with respect to the first variable and differential with respect to the other variable now we solve this u1 and u2 uh, simple derivative which is uh, partial in nature and once we find these values we can put these values here and there so substituting these values you get the total differential of the given utility function. Now we have the next question which is about the optimization. We are given a cost function which is this and it is subject to a production quota which is this. So this is the constraint and this is the objective function. Um, we can use and for the matrix approach uh, you can refer to this video which is about the bordered hashian its use. This is the link to it and this will be the uh, title of this video. So uh, in addition to that this uh, given situation is solved. So we are going to optimize this cost function which is the objective function. So you can see the cost function is written in first place then a plus sign and the degradation multiplier lambda inverting this uh, constraint function we get 39 minus x minus c y and then uh, the first order condition with respect to x with respect to y with respect to lambda. These are the three first order conditions and we have to find the uh, various uh, uh, critical values. This is the x bar, this is y bar, and this is lambda. These can be easily found by simply solving these three simultaneous equations and uh, then we can interpret these as well. So cost is also found. This cost is actually the optimized value that is the minimized value of cost function. And this can be found simply by putting the value of x and y in this given cost function that is here x and here x as well, y here and y here. So solving this we will get 
C is equal to 4349. So these are the critical values and this is the optimum value or optimized value. The other part of this question was to find the additional cost if the production quota is, is increased to 40. It is already 39 so if it is increased to 40 there will be one unit increase in it. So if one unit increase takes place how much the cost will increase. For that we can use the um, value of lambda because this will give us the marginal effect of the constraint on the objective function. So the constraint, uh, the marginal effect is 182. It means that if the co uh, the production quota, that is the constraint, increases by one unit, that is from 39 to 40, the objective function, that is cost, it will increase by 182. So you can add uh, 182 in this, and you can find the new optimized value in case where the sum of x and y that is the production quota is equal to 40. So this will be the uh, additional cost 182. So now we have interpreted this question completely. This is the link that you can use the uh, to find the answer by using the bordered hashing or determinant or matrix approach. Then we have the question number four and it's pertaining to the storage problem, uh, wine storage problem that we have already done and you can refer back to the uh, channel for the uh, solution of it. However, we are required only to use this value function that is the profit function and we are to maximize this. So this is the given uh, value function or profit function. We have to find that time that will maximize this value. So T status is to be found. So we will take its natural log because we want this T to be in the base not in the power or the exponent of the function. So taking natural log will cancel out this uh, Euler number and the variable t will come into the base. Now we can take the derivative of it. Once we do this, we know that the derivative uh, of this natural logarithmic function is equal to the derivative over function and the function is a. Here again the sum rule is applied and here the difference rule is applied. Uh, we will write the answer of this and that. As you can see, uh, this the answer of this term is equal to this and this term is equal to this. This will not need any result because it doesn't contain any uh, variable t here. So this is the result at this stage. Then this a will be transferred to the other side. Cross multiplying, we get this. Now it is equal to the first order derivative. We should be put equal to 0 for the sake of first order condition. Therefore, this term will be equal to 0. a will disappear. And then we will have the value of r or t. We are interested in the value of t, so we can be given the value of r, or we can assume a plausible value of r. And then putting this, we can get the value of t. And that will be equal to 25 years. So 25 years is the best time to sell the wine because its value will be maximized. So this was the first part of the question. The second part is to uh, find the Marshall products of this uh, production function. So this is the production function. The first Marshall product will be Marshall product of capital and the other will be Marshall product of labor. And uh, we can see that this is the given function and simply the partial differentiation has to be undertaken. And the answer in this case will be this. So it is the Marshall product of capital. This is the Marshall product of labor. And uh, we can see that in for the additional production uh, while using capital, we are having labor as well. So there is complementarity between labor and capital because if capital wants to produce another unit of output, it requires the role of labor. Here similar holds because if one additional unit of labor is used to produ produce additional amount of output, capital is also required in addition to labor. So this is how we can find the marginal products of capital and labor and this was the suggested solution of this midterm exam. I hope you have found it useful. Thank you.